Come on. Come on. You want two competitive drivers. You want everybody to be pushing everybody to the absolute limit. It's tough battling your teammate because you can't do the usual lunge because contact. They bumped again. They bumped again. Now he's going to get alongside. I don't want him happy. It's a bit of a shame because I loved always battling him until I joined the team. Then we couldn't really battle like that anymore. You tell me what I did wrong. By that, nothing. We're a team. Listen to your teammates. When we don't work together, you don't always get the results. We had to dig really deep and Jamie had to dig deep. This is as bad as it gets for the championship leader. That's what one thing that Jamie probably does better than anybody else, that he just keeps on digging deep, keeps on grinding away. That was absolutely the wildest race I've ever been involved in and, and probably ever will be involved in. Wing Cup, Pete Pasquale and Davison, one, two and three. I'm also to start, Kate, I'm also to start. This is where we want to be. Off the road, that's Van Gisbergen. Can he stop it before the fence? Yes, he does. Jamie Wincup's got a lead of 1.2 seconds. We've got 25 laps remaining, and the visibility's caving in out there at the moment. What do you think about getting out of this traffic, mate? On one hand, yes. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm back at the park. Safety car boss, please. Safety car boss, please. So they're getting ready down there, and in comes Jamie responding to this. 12 laps remaining in what's been a wild ride, and this is the reason why. The race is red flags, it will not resume. The race is called. You are the winner. <laughs> race win number 124 in his career, then for Jamie Wincup. Makes it win number three for him in 2021. Presenting your first place winner here tonight from Red Bull and Pole Racing, J.B. Winkar. 2021 marks the end of an incredible era of success for Triple Eight Race Engineering. Following the final round at the Bathurst 1000, seven-time Supercars champion Jamie Wincup will hang up his helmet as a full-time driver. There are plenty of factors and it wasn't an easy decision. It's, it's a massive, massive life-changing call to make. Now, I've had a fantastic career. Um, the sport owes me nothing and I owe it everything. He has been the modern day master of V8 supercars. I don't think it was ever thought that Jamie was going to be the GOAT, the superstar that he's turned out to be. Jamie Winkup, 100 supercar victories. The stats back up the fact that he is currently the greatest of all time and will likely to be the greatest that we'll ever see. The best in the business is now alongside the best of all time. Jamie Wincup has had a huge disaster into the wall. Contact, disaster at the front of the race. It's an unbelievable storyline. Wincup is out of fuel. Sometimes he's had to reinvent himself in order to keep his own enthusiasm going. And sometimes he had to reinvent himself because the car or the competition or whatever has needed him to change his driving style or whatever and adapt to the competition. That is an emotional and extraordinary achievement. To have that level of consistency at the absolute point end of the field for Jamie Wincup in that period would have to be considered as, as maybe the best ever. And Australian motorsport will applaud this man he goes into the record books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Roland, uh, I can see this one means a lot to you. Where's this one ranked for you, mate? It's pretty special. It is. Jamie's retirement aligned with Roland Dane's decision to step away from his position as managing director and team principal. For Wincup, an opportunity to step into a management position and grow professionally. The expectation of team management whilst driving and then stepping into a greater team ownership and management scenario comes with an incredibly complex and demanding set of circumstances. There's a responsibility for people that have got mortgages, they've got families, they've got their kids going to school. It's outside of motorsport per se. It's, it's outside of your weekend's result of trying to put some car on pole position. As a key element of the restructuring plan, 
Roland assigned additional management responsibility to his daughter and co-owner Jessica. I'm really looking forward to working with Jamie in a different capacity next year. I think he will be the perfect person for leading Triple Eight into the future. And performance drops massively as well, so it's you just got to balance the two. High-profile business mogul Tony Quinn also took a stake in the business to help usher in a new era. I cannot think of anybody that could follow on from Roland Dane uh, better than Jamie. And our job is to guide Jamie through the pitfalls of team principle. For the majority of supercars drivers, life behind the steering wheel begins at a very early age and typically in karting. Skills are honed and racecraft developed. It is also the petri dish where rivalries bloom and often continue all the way to supercar competition. We've battled for years, not only him, I guess the whole generation that I was part of um, many years ago. It was, a, it was a massive progression. You look at Caruso, Will Davison, Alex Davison, the list goes on, and we all race go-cars together, and then you just race big cars together. And we could have some pretty cool karting stories that people have never seen some of the best races of your life. It took place Wagga, um, you know, all these regional towns around Australia. The motor racing career ladder often encourages young drivers to step up from karts and into Formula Ford. In his debut year, 2001, Jamie Wincup finished the season in third place and then convincingly won the Formula Ford Championship the following season. I'd driven go-karts my whole life and jumped into a Formula Ford, had plenty of airflow across the helmet. And then to get in a car behind a windscreen with no airflow, that was a real strange environment in this heated sweat box sauna. Doing your thing was quite unique, but I did question the first few days. I'm like, is this for me? It's so, so weird, so unique. Um, is this what I want to do? But um, once I got used to the supercar, I just started to, uh, to, to enjoy the, the challenge of getting this, this raw beast around the track. Win Cup's supercar drive opportunity was delivered by legendary team owner and former driver Gary Rogers. This union introduced Win Cup to the brutal reality of professional motorsport. Oh, look at that, Jamie. Win Cup's a victim at turn six. The partnership didn't click. Rogers' patience wore thin at the lack of results. Look, it's really disappointing, to be quite frank. You know, I, I don't know what to say. We've just failed dismally today. And and what Gary regarded as a failure to accept guidance. Before the season ended, Win Cup was out of a drive. It didn't end well. I was the young kid that was seen to have given, been given an opportunity that didn't make the most of it, so I was somewhat blacklisted. Win Cup was gutted. Having a taste of life at the elite level motorsport, he wanted more and would have to work harder to secure a drive. It was an awkward 12 months ringing team owners, just can you give me a lap, two laps, five laps, a short test in a car. Um, as I said, I've always had plenty of self-belief. I knew once I, I could get back in, I could do the job, but it was just trying to create those opportunities. 2004 proved to be another tough year. Unable to secure a full-time race seat, Jamie had an opportunity to partner with Alex Davison at the Sandown 500 and Bathurst 1000 in a Larry Perkins Holden. Perkins, just like Rogers, was one of the toughest operators in the pit paddock. Once again, Win Cup struggled. I certainly did my apprenticeship, that's for sure. Those guys, uh, they say it as it is, are straight down the line. Overall, I'm really grateful of th that Gary gave me the opportunity and of course Larry as well. Then, in 2005, Jamie secured a full-time race seat with a new, promising outfit, Tasman Motorsports. He delivered some solid results during the season. But his superlative drive at the Bathurst 1000 caught the attention of the industry. Jamie, your career was in real trouble about 12 months ago. This is a wonderful way to bounce back. Yeah, it's great to stand here and get a result. And, uh, hello to everyone at home and happy birthday to Dad for tomorrow. Together with Kiwi Jason Richards, Win Cup secured a brilliant runner-up drive in the great race and Roland Dane came shopping. 
If anyone asked me what's the defining moment, it was probably that event. I didn't know at the time, but um, but RD was looking for a young, cheap, cheap bloke to <laughs> stay out of trouble all year and then team up with Lounsey to win the great race. In an era where you could put both your drivers together into one car, both your regular drivers, then I wanted to have the strongest possible pairing. And Jamie had shown how good he was uh, backing up Jason Richards. But also, he was just dead, dead keen to drive. He was just, he wanted to get his ass in our car. I followed those cars, I saw what they did. I saw the way that they come from, from here to here and so fast. I knew they were going to be a, a force to be reckoned with for, for a long time. And, and, and so did, I think so did half a pit lane. RD asked the question. I said, uh, I'll, I'll get on a plane tomorrow and um, went and had a basically a five minute chat. The deal with Triple Eight was done before I got back to the before I got back to the airport. So had a quick chat with him, quick chat with the engineers. He spoke to the engineers while I was driving to the airport and, and I was sitting in the lounge waiting for my plane home and got a got the offer and accepted it and off we went. With the deal done, 2006 was to be a coming of age year for Jamie Wincup. Hired to assist Triple Eight's number one driver and superstar Craig Lowndes. What about it for a star of the future, Jamie Wincup? It became quickly apparent that Jamie had more potential than just a role as a support driver. No one thought that quickly that uh, Jamie would be up there. And in 2007, Craig Lowndes and Jamie Wincup, they have done the double. He wanted a tail gunner to assist Lowndes. I don't think it was ever thought that Jamie was going to be the GOAT, the superstar that he's turned out to be. Particularly overtaking the race wins and, and the success of, of Craig, that I think came as a surprise to everyone. We always knew that he was capable of great things, but just that great um, was a very pleasant surprise. When Jamie first jumped in a Triple Eight race car, the team was framed around Craig Lowndes. Lowndes, he, he has a, quite a unique driving style. He generated this real unique way to go fast, but it wasn't actually my natural style. It wasn't my the, the, the style I'd grown up with in go-karts and Formula Fords. So I did 12 months the, the, the Lowndes way just to, to feel my way. However, it quickly became obvious the team had two superstar drivers on hand. Remember this young guy, Jamie Wincup, sends the four fans into a frenzy. Wincup wins for the first time. The speed was within him. It's just his work ethic lifted the team to a new level, a new bar to push me. Lowndes and Wincup do it. That is an incredible run race. Fantastic job, mate. Unbelievable. And With attention to detail and ability to set up a race car, Wincup was able to help build the team into a regular race and championship winning force. We're a little bit chalk and cheese on some regards. Uh, you know, he's very anal, um, he's OCD on some things. <laughs> so I know that we've had test days, that we've debuted a new car. He'll hear a vibration. I can't, he can. The team literally pull the race car apart, finding this vibration or, or noise. There's never been a, a stone unturned about his way he operates. I started to get some, some real trust with the engineering group and also the mechanics and the rest of the team to go, oh, can we, can we try over here a bit? Because this is more, more my style. And the car was starting to be designed a little bit around my style rather than um, completely lounges. They've all got a round up one man who has been rock solid, and that is Jamie Wincup. You need a fast car to be up the front, but you need a good team and good teamwork to, uh, to win the race. With the team beginning to understand and respect Jamie's meticulous nature to both car preparation and setup, 
the championship started to flow. That's quite a season for Jamie Wincup. 25 years of age, she's the new champion. Wincup's impeccable driving proved he was regularly the man to beat. Great job, mate. It was certainly a very, very strong performance for the whole of the season. Congratulations. Thanks, Scotty. Yeah, no, massive effort, mate. Just one sec, dude. Here we go. Well done, mate. <laughs> In this golden period of supercar dominance, Wincup could do no wrong. The wins and championships were his for the taking. Then, in early 2012, the loss of Jamie's father came as a devastating blow. And it was the biggest loss of my life because dad was dad, but he was also my best mate at the same time. Instead of me going to the school party, we spent 40 weekends of the year racing carts, and then we spent another four or five weeks holidaying together at the end of the year. You know, we basically, we, we lived together. I remember it was a tough time for Dad when I moved out of home. I thought it'd be great for him to see me move on, but um, no, he, he was in the car, he, we drove to Queensland, and he, he, um, he almost moved to Queensland for the first six months. So it was a big loss, but I went into, I got a job to do here for my teammates and uh, make sure I do the, the best job I can. This is like a qualifying lap. The lights are up like a Christmas tree. He's sliding the car, he's over the curbs. It's full attack. And what followed on track was an epic battle and a spectacular and emotional victory. We pitted for a third time. Davo just went on with a two-stop strategy and he was milking at home with very little fuel in the tank. And I had better tyres, full fuel, but coming from a long way back. And yeah, for it to come down to a pass at the end of the end of the back straight on the last lap. And Wing Cup will get him. They can't believe it. Everybody here can't believe it. To win the first race after Dad had passed away, it's a, it's a fairy tale. You've got to applaud this man who's put together one of the most perfect efforts you'll ever see to claim victory in the season opener. To me, that it's, it's hard to move past that as his best ever drive. <laughs> you know, all you can do is go out there and do the best you can. And uh, today it was good enough. His dad, David, had been with him every single step of the way for his race career, so this one will certainly mean a lot up there on the podium. This is a short, sharp session where you've got to rock and roll, make it all work. There's nothing fancy about the format for this today. You go out, you apply your trade, you get the job done, you do a time, that's it. We're inside two minutes. Armour all qualifying. Race 28 of the championship season. Jamie Wincup has got fresh air. Shane Van Gisbergen's got fresh air. They are all chasing Will Brown. The young man from Toowoomba is making big statements at Sydney Motorsport Park. Now, Wincup's time in the mid-sector is better than anybody else, and his cumulative time is going to put him on target to eclipse Will Brown here at the moment. We shall see. Wincup makes his run towards the line. He wasn't happy with the performance yesterday, but he'll be happy when he sees that number on the dash. It's a 28-9. Van Gisbergen with a 29-1. Awesome job, mate. Awesome job. Currently, we're just, currently on pole, just waiting for Squally. I don't think Anton's lap's going to be good enough, Croppo. I don't think it is. Yes, got it. Oh, woo! Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> Congrats all round inside the garage at Red Bull. <laughs> he may be the best to ever drive a supercar. And although Wincup's full-time driving career is near the end, Jamie still has plenty of fight left in him. Constantly nipping at the heels of the current championship leader and teammate, Shane Van Gisbergen. It had been an unusually long time since Wincup last clinched the Supercars Championship. Four championships on the trot. And this man now owns a very special place in the history of the sport. 
Newcastle 2017 provided Jamie with an opportunity to demonstrate he was still a serious force in a racing car. That was absolutely the wildest race I've ever been involved in and, and probably ever will be involved in. There's contact between Winkup and Caruso. This is a big story. We crashed on the first lap on the Saturday race. This is as bad as it gets for the championship leader. I remember saying to Jamie, let's, let's not give up. Like, we can still win this, and even if we don't win the championship, let's, let's finish the year winning the race. If we won that race and we didn't win the championship, then at least we can go home and say, well, that's all we could, have, that's all we could do, you know? We, we couldn't have done any more than that. This is the grand finale from Newcastle. We're away. The final race of the season, and the championship was on the line. We were still a mathematical chance to win, but it was a bit of a long shot. It proved to be one of the most compelling and controversial races in supercars history. Craig Lowndes is ready to pounce. It's all or nothing. This is everything for the Virgin Australia Supercar Championship this year. Jamie fought his way to the front of the field, and any chance of a Win Cup Championship claim depended on his teammate Craig Lowndes defeating Scott McLaughlin. Here comes Craig Lowndes, but at the moment McLaughlin's got this. He's just managed to grab 11th place. That is enough for a championship. This is not done, folks. I was fighting for fifth in the championship myself, and that for me and, and for drivers, you've got financial incentives to, to do well in championships. So, um, for me, it was all about my position, not Jamie's or Scotty's. Nobody could have predicted what was about to unfold. He made a mistake, Lowndes down the inside! They're gonna crash! They've hit on the way up the hill! Lowndes is out of business! Oh. He's off the road! What an extraordinary end to Craig Lowndes' day! It wasn't my battle. It wasn't my fight. Scotty was leading he would have won the championship. I'm not in there to, to cause trouble. Unfortunately, I got caught up in it, yes. Under investigation is car number 17. This championship is not going to be resolved in a gentlemanly manner. Supercars fans were seething and divided along brand lines. Was McLaughlin the bad guy, squeezing Lowndes? Or was Craig Lowndes the villain who ruined what could have been Scott McLaughlin's first championship win? Both of us were getting huge amount of stupid negativity on. I turned left into the concrete wall purposely to give Scotty a, a, a penalty. You know, Scotty was getting ish, um, you know, messages from punters that were, you know, disgusting. Yes, it changed completely changed the, the course of the championship, but it wasn't meant to be that way. It was just something that happened in motor racing. Win Cup is going to win this race. Currently, McLaughlin will win the championship unless he is penalised. When we crossed the line, we didn't know that we'd won the championship because Scotty hadn't been given a penalty yet. So Jamie crossed the line and he said, you know, so, so what happened? Did, did we win? A post-race pit lane penalty for car number 17 for a driving infringement. Yeah, mate, that's the championship. They've issued him with a post-race pit lane penalty. So that's the championship for Jacob. Jamie Wincup is champion. He is the champion for 2017. I remember I, I started screaming, and then when I went to tell Jamie, I, I couldn't speak. I, I, I literally couldn't speak. So, and I don't think any experience will ever top that for a long time. It was special to me because and we had this massive force coming in DJR Team Penske and that team was just getting better and better and better and better and, and we were really up against it, you know. We were, um, you know, we had to dig really deep and Jamie had to dig deep and that's what one thing that Jamie probably does better than anybody else, that he just keeps on digging deep, keeps on grinding away and that's, that's why he won the championship that year. Title number seven from the Red Bull Hockey Racing Team. Jamie's seventh championship sits at the top of his incredible record. By the end of 2017, he topped the charts for podium finishes, pole positions, and a staggering 108 race wins. More than any other driver in the history of supercars.
if we're not quick enough and I'll make up my ass, I've got to, got to let him through. Yeah, so the only thing is, if he's up your ass, but we're still pulling away from those guys, then that's okay. Okay. Hopefully we've got pace. That's all we can do. That's all we can that's do. That's the best strategy. That's correct. These guys are going to be hard to climb over and they'll race hard. We've seen a lot of evidence where both Jamie and Shane are prepared to take it to the last millimetre in the arm wrestle within that team. And you heard Shane say before, the rule doesn't change, you know, we're free to race, but teammates don't touch each other, so... But yeah, we'll be, we'll be battling hard for sure. Absolutely perfect start by both the Red Bulls. But Wind Cup takes the ascendancy. I'd taken a big risk to put the car on pole, thrown everything at it, got a good start, and I led the race the first stint. If anything, I sort of gapped away a little bit at the end of the first stint. So, in my mind, it, that was my race. Bit, bit, mate. Bit, bit. Roll out, roll out, 88. We weren't really racing 97, we were sort of working together. We pitted. I come out of the pits and, once again, naively thinking, I thought he was going to come in the next lap, come out behind, and we're both going to come through and have a one-two, but didn't pit that lap. So the second lap goes by, didn't pit again. Pit this lap, Shane, pit this lap. It was that moment then that it was, oh, hang on, we're, we're, ba we're battling each other. Be clear to go, we drop you. Standing by, get ready. Go, go, go. Shane come out of the pits. He normally takes about two or three laps to um, to warm the tyres up and get going. But he was like, my opportunity to get 88 is straight away. So he belted out of the pits while I was still sort of getting, getting the tyres up to speed. Um, and then the battle was on. And now the assault begins on his teammate. Shane's trying to claw over, under and around. That uses tyre energy in that process. He needs some of that if he's got anything for Will Brown. Will to Jamie is three and a half seconds and you can see the margin between Jamie and Shane. So what we're talking about is something less than four seconds between the race leader, Will Brown, and this guy, Shane Van Gisbergen. Jamie's been told to let you through. Jamie's been told to let you through. Yeah, let's let him, let him try and catch Brown here, please. I've got three rounds to go of my full-time career, so I don't have much time left, and there was an opportunity there as a big carrot that I can grab a race win here. There's quite a few incidents during the year where I've had to sort of play the, the team role and move over for 97, mainly because he was the quickest car. Maybe that, you know, all those times that I sort of pulled over and let the 97 through during the year, maybe there, there might be a little bit in return, you know what I mean, and maybe work with me to, to, to get a one-two. He's underneath him, they're touching. There's supposed to be a no-touch rule here. Sorry about that, sorry. All good, mate, all good. Eyes forward. Look, we've got to catch Brown. I think we let Jade up know. Let's let Jade up know. Shane has got the pace, we were after Brown. These guys are caught up in a battle and down the inside again he goes. And he's on the wrong side now, Van Gisbergen. Well, that's another touch. Oh, and he's off the road. Ah! Ah, you can see the cars off the road so much and then the competitors are laughing, thinking, oh, it's great for these blokes to be so volatile. Uh, what's going on? We're wanting to let Shane through, wanting to let Shane through. That's the call, Captain's call. Oh, and I can guarantee you that Roland Dane will not be happy seeing these two guys doing this at the moment. Well, they're slowing each other up. He's running right off the road this time. Hey, why am I going to run off the track? He's being told again. He's being told again, mate. Jada, mate, let's say no through. He's got a better chance of catching Brown. Let's work together to catch Brown, please. It's Mark Dutton on the radio saying, let Shane through. He's got a better chance of catching Will Brown. Jada, no option, mate, no option. Let the faster team car through, faster team car through. Please confirm, mate. How about, how about he worked with me to get up the road? They're in a negotiation. And I don't know that that's a good plan right at the moment. It was his decision to battle, I think, when he was getting told to let me through. Like, I had a lot better tyres, three laps better, and I knew that the wrong thing was happening at the time. Like, I was just getting clean run off the road, which is fine when you're battling, but not against the teammate when there was a bigger picture at hand. What? Can I get through? 
We've told him too many times, we look like fucking wankers if we keep bleating on the radio, unfortunately. He's been told, he didn't listen, so no, no, nothing on you, but let's just make sure we keep pumping him through. I understand Jamie's point of view that, you know, I've got a handful of races left and I'm still trying to, to win and I keep getting beaten by this bloke. My frustration was up there purely because not so much fighting between them, but certainly Jamie had forgotten that Will Brown was up the road. But this is unbelievable reality supercar TV. How good is this? It's now half a second between Brown and Winkup. as anything. We used to have a heap of energy, a heap of energy in the tyres to, uh, to try to, to racing each other. Um, but even after that, we were still in good shape to, to still be able to win the race. And they're on him and they're nose to tail. They're all starting to rattle each other. Will drives around the inside. Shane takes the high line. He'll get a better corner exit here. He'll be a threat to win cup at the other end of the straight. Five laps to go. We got close to Will Brown, but SVG was still trying to battle. That battle meant I couldn't have a, have a crack at Will. And I still tried to get that get that race win, but um, unfortunately I couldn't do both things at once. And this is a mega moment for Will Brown. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. First ever supercar victory. Oh, yeah, sorry guys, that was uh, probably an easy win, but yeah, just smoking tires, basically kind of, yeah. To go into the garage and see how upset they were that a triple eight car hadn't won when we could have done, he realised the size of the of the error. So he he apologised um, literally as soon as he could to everyone. At the end of the day, he didn't do what he's told. Unfortunately, we we fucked away race win there for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, we did. Fucked away race win. Fucks me off. Fuck it. Of course, you're disappointed, you're gutted. You want to throw things, you want to punch the wall and all those normal feelings and emotions. But never have I been angry at Jamie um, for anything that he's done on the track because I always understand his reasons and why he's done it. And I know that you just need to move on to the next race and grow from it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, we lost it fighting each other. Hey? We lost it fighting yeah. each other, but yeah, that's yeah. all good. Some people think you should have won, so really I should have. That's all right. But Baz, congratulations, mate. That's an amazing result. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it's just incredible, and it's great to see that Red Bull don't work together. So to hear what was going on in their garage, I was just laughing. So, mate. Yeah, this won't be the one. I won't be the one getting yelled at this time. No. No, he's told enough times, that's for sure. Yeah. You feel like as a team you lost that one together? Certainly did, yeah. When I see teammates doing that, that's not being part of a team. Why do I work as hard as I do? Why does everyone put in so much, working as a team, sacrificing so much? That's the knife and the blade that I feel when, when they when they overstep that boundary. As I said, it's not the points, it's, it's we're a team act like a team. Sometimes you need the captain to make a call and I'm a huge believer of that. So for the captain, which was Dado at the time, to make the call and for me to reverse that, looking back, that's probably what I was what I was most disappointed with. I'm getting groomed to be the, the managing director and here's me in the race car doing exactly what you shouldn't do. But um, it, it really hurt to to disrespect a, a mate and somebody that's been around for a long time, and that's that's probably what I wasn't was least proud of after um, after the race had finished and the adrenaline had, uh, had washed off, and I knew I'd, I'd done the wrong thing. And like so, I gave him basically stopped him from making a fuck up, and we still got fucked. So that's all right. I'll be a yeah, cunt. I kind of mind that he chose to race. Like, that's yeah. Cool. But he just wheeled me off the track twice. Yeah. That was the shit bit, like wheel to wheel and you just run me off the road. Yeah. And then I always so. get told off from fucking racing. I was a lot more annoyed in those few moments with, with Jamie for undermining what would be his team manager going forward. You're the boss next year. How would you respond to drivers going rogue? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll attack that next year. <laughs> yeah. Are you suggesting someone went rogue today? <laughs> Ah.
Bye, mate. Long afternoon. Let's get this done. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. All right, mate. We'll keep a cool head and we'll work together. Good luck. Safety car boards and swag. Safety car boards and swag. Hit this lap. Hit this lap. You are stacking. You are stacking. And a huge number of cars in the field. In fact, I think all have reacted to take the first compulsory stop. Van Gisbergen, and you can hear them trying to thread him back into the queue. That was costly. Green flags, green flags. Down the inside, Van Gisbergen on Di Pasquale and done. And letting 97 through when we can, please. Letting 97 through when we can, please. Thank you. Okay, Jamie's been told to let you through at the earliest convenience, mate. But it's raining at Sydney Motorsport Park. And I'd much prefer to be on the super soft tyre right now, trying to hunt down the leaders. That was a bit easier than last week. There's a heap of people on the super soft tyre that are making hay. Heavier, some heavier drops in pit lane, mate, but we think this will pass pretty quickly. I don't care about that. Just tell me if people go off. Heavier drops in pit lane, mate, but we think this will pass pretty Sorry for yelling. Pushing. All good, bud. All good. Now, this little group here, they're 22, 23 odd seconds behind. 14 laps remain. That's going to be a tall order, but they are on a fast tyre, depending on what's going on with the track condition at the moment. Great driving, Jenna. Great driving. 5.9. Speeding to SPG, pulling away from everyone else on hard. This is the battle for third, and it might quickly become a battle for the lead. Van Gisbergen does the undercut. Better traction, and that moves him up into third. This has been a fantastic drive. Beautiful driving, mate. Four to go, four to go. Over here at turn four, but it was great. And the stunning performance in greasy conditions down there by Van Gisbergen. Drives up the inside of Will Brown. This is a battle for second place. Shane Van Gisbergen is bringing this race alive. Consider this car after the double stack on lap seven. He was back to ninth in the race. He was gone. And in these conditions, he is supreme. Now, can he put a move on Waters? And he's going to turn down nice and straight, nice and square, maximise the grip and he's able to do it. Goes to the lead, Van Gisbergen. Now Wind Cup gets up the inside of Brown and it would seem that those recycled tyres have done a mighty job matching to the road. Think about the emotion of last weekend and think about the way in which Red Bull have responded. It is race victory number 54 for Shane Van Gisbergen. His teammate Jamie Winkup, position two, 1.1 seconds behind. And all the crew celebrating what has been a magnificent race for not just Shane Van Gisbergen, but for Jamie Winkup also. Oh shit, that was loose. Whoa. I'm still learning new things. I'm still forced to evolve, still forced to do something different than what I've done the last 10 years to be, to stay relevant and stay competitive. And that's what's, that's what's kept it fresh. In second place for Red Bull Ampole Racing, Jamie Winkup. <laughs> Doing any gig for 17 years, Thing to become repetitive, you know, and once it repeats too many times, you, you need to have a reset, you need to get a new challenge and off you go. So that, along with uh, wanting to give a, a, another young kid an opportunity in, the, um, in, in one of the best seats, they were the, they were the two big motivators, you know. Hello, hello, afternoon, afternoon. Win Cup will be driving again at Bathurst in 2022, this time as a co-driver. However, his future as a pro racer remains uncertain beyond that engagement. It's possible the pressure and workload of running a large racing and manufacturing operation could become overwhelming. And driving a supercar may well be the casualty. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't continue to drive, only because of, of his work ethic and, and his passion 
what he's brought to the team. Him retiring out as a full-time driver, I think that the urge within him, that, that little fire in his belly, I think once he gets a couple of months out of the sport or out of the driver's seat, although he'll be sort of directing the ship, I think that he'll definitely want a desire to, to at least maybe have 12 months, maybe even two years as a co-driver to see where he's at. It's great to see the full circle that he's still going to maintain a position within the sport. We all have our different phases, whether you phase into media, whether you phase into a, a team management, a team owner, whatever you do, it's great to still see that we, we capture the people within the sport and keep the personalities there. I'm going to grab those core things that, that RD and all the great leaders have done and try to do those well first and foremost. But then I want to obviously want to do it my way as well and put my own uh, mix on it. There's a little bit of Ross Braun in me as well. Don't try to come in and, and change everything straight up. There's observe for, observe for 12 months. Understand why the business is the way it is before you, before you make a change. I'm sure I'm going to get further understanding in the first six to 12 months of, oh, hang on, it's that way for a reason. So, um, so, so, so let's keep it that way. It's been a hell of a ride. The experiences I've had, good, bad and indifferent throughout the whole journey from back into 2002, the first event. Oh, look at that, Jamie Winkup's a victim at turn six. I don't know what to say, we've just failed dismally today. Getting in, out again, getting back in. It's great to stand here and get a result. And uh, Hello to everyone at home and happy birthday to Dad for tomorrow. Having a start with the best team in the pit lane. Newcomer, Jamie Winkup is in the team. This guy is a sensation getting on a run of wins and championships in the middle there. That is an emotional and extraordinary achievement. It's been a roller coaster and I wouldn't have it any other way. I've got, got no regrets and uh, looking forward to, to the next chapter. He has been the modern day master of V8 supercars. You know, we've, we've had this instrumental leader that we had so much trust in. Everyone turn around! That figure is now moving on. That's where the pressure's on my shoulders, you know. Here we go, everyone. Awful lot of change. And, yeah, that, that's, that's daunting. It's intimidating. I think change is good. The same people doing the same job over and over. But you're, you're going to get beaten. 